。之所以叫仙女瀑布，是因为有仙女潭再加上瀑布，但这里是国内十大危险水域，二十多名救难人员抵达瀑布口，全副武装准备下水救人。仙女瀑布景色绝美，不过却是危险水域，游客玩得开心，但其实仙女瀑布暗藏危机。仙女瀑布设有告示牌，早就被列为危险水域，从二零一六年到现在三年内就有四个人死亡。一二三，路途中消防队员发现一对外国男女来到这边，原本计划跳。水千万别侥幸下水，列为危险水域，禁止任何水域游戏活动。网络流传的错误讯息，水流缓慢，但平静的水面下却暗藏许多暗流。错误讯息，台面看起来平静，但底下暗流汹涌，一旦被卷入，难以脱身。错误讯息，这平静的水面下暗藏一大堆暗流。错误讯息，但是仙女瀑布水深最深有十五公尺。错误讯息，看似平静却暗藏激流。错误讯息。That's false. It's not true. Either they're wrong or they're lying. But either way, there is no significant current in Shenu Pupu. There is no anlio. There is no undercurrent. There are no undercut rocks that you can jump in and, and, and get stuck into. There is only one thing that's dangerous about this pool, and one thing only, and that is that it's deep. And so people who can't swim, when they get into deep water, they will drown. I have heard the fire department, and I have heard coaches, the Soshi Jialian, talk about these anlios in this pool and pools like it, and they know that it's not true, and they are just lying to people. They just tell people false information because they think that it will scare people into not going in the river. And I've confronted them about it, and I've said, "Hey, why are you lying to people?" Like you know, there's no anlio here. You know that there's no dangerous current in this pool or you know some other pool. And they just say like, yeah, we know. Of course we know. We go in the pool. But the people who who know that will go in and have no problem. And the people who don't know that, well, we've just scared them so they won't go in and they won't have an accident. I disagree with this logic. I think this is a flawed assumption. I think that it confuses people. I think that it's dangerous, and that it causes more accidents down the road. I think that if you want to have true water safety, you need to be honest with people. You need to have good information, relevant information, and give people the tools that they need to make decisions for themselves. If you give people false information, then they're going to act in ways that are unpredictable, and especially in this case, because. You tell them it's dangerous. They go in somewhere else. They find out it's not dangerous, and then they get confused. In other places, they just can't tell. Just teach people how to read the river, and you'll never have this problem. So let's take a look at Shen Nu Pupu, and let's compare it to a video I recently did on Shaluan Waterfall. So as we saw earlier in Shaluan Waterfall, there's a lot of water that comes in. It is a big waterfall and a big river that can have a strong flow. That water has a restricted outlet, and so it causes it to circulate in the pool. Shen Nu Pupu. Doesn't have this issue. Shenu Pupu has a small inlet. It doesn't have much water,、uh, except for in extreme flooding conditions when nobody would be in there anyway. But in swimming conditions, when people visit the waterfall, I have yet to see a single video of somebody swimming in the waterfall when there's enough water to have a current. Shenu Waterfall is a small waterfall. It is in a small river, and the outlet for the pool to the waterfall encompasses the whole river. It's wide, so the water comes in. And it goes straight out. It doesn't do any funny stuff. There's only one small place where you have a little bit of a circulating current right there next to the waterfall,、uh, or looking towards the waterfall on the right. That's just a place you can relax. There isn't anything dangerous there. It's not pulling you in. That is a place where it'll be flat, and you can just just relax. The water coming directly out of the waterfall. It just boom goes straight out. It'll push you out. You can see it clearly in the videos. It's just going straight out. So why do people drown here? And what can we do to prevent it? There's a very simple reason why people drown here, and there is a very simple way to fix it. People drown here because they enter the waterfall from the top. The water is deep. At the base of the waterfall, the water is very deep. They get in there expecting it to be shallow, not expecting to swim. A lot of people in Taiwan, they think they can swim. They go to a swimming pool and they can swim. But when they get into a place where the water is too deep to see the bottom or too dark to see the bottom, they freak out, they panic, and they drown. Coming in from this angle, from the top of the waterfall, you can see that the water is white. 
white water is aerated water. There are air bubbles in the water that reduces the density of the water, which makes you sink. It makes it a little bit harder to swim because you don't have as much buoyancy. In a lot of the comments, in a lot of the videos, in a lot of news, I hear this miscategorized as an undercurrent. People talk about this as like something that sucks you under. 这些被水流拉下去之后，它卡住，没有办法及时的上。it's crucial that people understand this is not a suction force. This is just gravity. You are being pushed down by air pressure because the water is less dense. Very simple. There's lots of ways around it, but basically you should expect that when you're in white water, you're gonna have to swim harder to stay afloat. In this case, it's very, very minor because it immediately just pushes you out into somewhere where the water is more dense because it's a small waterfall. However, that few seconds is enough for somebody to panic, inhale water, and then they're unable to save themselves. Similarly to as what can happen in Shalawan waterfall is this water can be very cold. It can lead people to shock. They suddenly submerge themselves in cold water up to their, ch up to their neck or over their head, and they jump up and they go, <gasps> and that can induce water into your air pipes, and then people start to panic. These are the reasons that people drown in Xian Nu Pupu. It has nothing to do with any of the currents, it has nothing to do with any of the rocks. It is very, very simple. So what can be done to prevent these deaths? Well, it's very, very simple. There's a simple solution that I talked about in 2017. Instead of having the entrance to the waterfall at the top, if people go down from the bottom and hike up the river, they will not have the issue of suddenly submerging themselves in water that is several meters deep. Not only is this a much safer way, but it is also easier and quicker. The road to the top is broken. You should park here. When I went there, I camped there, but I believe the, that road is blocked off now, but still you can walk down it. Walk down to the waterfall, it takes five minutes. Hike up the river, it takes 10, 15 minutes. You'll get to the bottom of the pool. Here, you can walk in to up to your chest or you know slowly get into the water. You won't have the shock of it suddenly being so cold because you're not suddenly submerging yourself up to your neck. And you can choose if you want to go into the very deep water or not. And if you do have an accident, you go in and you freak out. Self-rescue is much, much easier because the distance to getting to a place you can stand is much closer. And also, you know, you're nearby, people can throw you stuff, people can throw a rope. As I recommended in the video earlier, you should have a throw bag with you. And it's just a much safer way to do it. You can still, of course, swim out to the bottom of the waterfall, use the rope to climb up and jump off. Uh, in terms of jumping or diving at this waterfall, there's nothing special about it, uh, uh, except for maybe it's actually especially safe. There's nothing dangerous about this waterfall aside from the entrance being on the wrong side. If you take out the entrance, I believe that at least 90% of all of the deaths at this waterfall can be prevented. There is still one issue, which is that it, you know, it doesn't just gradually get deep like uh, it would at you know, sort of a soft beach. The, these are big rocks, so you're standing on the rocks and it's possible to sort of step off a ledge and then, you know, be in deep water. So you still need to be careful, but it is still a much, 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 much easier way to get in than going down from the top because you're gradually getting into the water and you're not entering moving water, you're entering still water. I want to add emphasis to the words still water because aside from this white part where you see the water clearly moving, Everywhere else in this waterfall is pretty much still, and if you go under the water, if you go deep under the water, it, it's not moving at all. There's no movement at all underwater. It is a myth or a lie or just a misunderstanding that there is movement under the water. There isn't, okay? It's not true. There is no movement under the water. You can you can hold your breath you just sit down there relax as long as you want you're not going to move anywhere so that is my recommendation for what to do about this waterfall currently it's banned under the act for tourism development article 36 which i think is a mistake i, mean, I think that whole law is a mistake uh, i think that it should be reopened and i think that if the government was serious or the fire department is serious about preventing accidents here instead of telling people not to go here and and feeding people the wrong information, I think that uh, they should just make a nice path to the bottom. There's already a pretty nice path, but you know you can put up a sign there and say, go down from here. It's a simple solution 
to a simple problem. And while I, I really like that、um, they provided these kind of swimming rings up at the top, I think that it's good. 每个月都会诶联合稽查救生设备有没有。You know, if you have just the the hooks where you hang up a life jacket, you take it when you go in, you put it back when you leave. 不过原本挂在那一个牌子下方的救生圈，竟然被一些游客拿去当游泳圈。该救人的时候没有东西可救。They mentioned in the news that some people have been taking those things, so obviously、uh, that's not good. Uh, you know that's a、um, a problem. If you do see a life jacket borrowing system, you should of course not take those life jackets home with you, and should always return them. However, that is a separate issue. I hope that you found this video helpful to everybody who does plan to go to waterfalls. If you're not a competent swimmer, and being able to swim in a swimming pool does not make you a competent swimmer, this is not a、uh, ego thing. This is a, a simple safety thing. If you freak out in strong moving water, if you are hit by a wave and you're suddenly smashed against the bottom of the the ocean, if that freaks you out, then you're not a competent swimmer in these conditions. If you have any doubt at all, even just a small doubt, you are not sure. Then whenever you are around natural waters like this, you should be wearing a life jacket. A life jacket is not just for when you you go in the water; it is for when you are outside of the water and you accidentally find yourself. In the water, most drowning deaths in Taiwan are not people doing crazy things. They are people who have accidentally found themselves in water when they didn't expect to. So, if you are planning to go to this area, even if you're not planning to go in deep, if you are at all not confident, then there's a very easy, simple way, which is to give yourself a buoyancy aid.、It、doesn't have to be a life jacket. Maybe it's just something you can hold on to, something that helps you float. That's my two cents on it. I hope that they remove the restriction on this area. Taichung government has been some of the most draconian with closing water spots. There's more spots in Taichung that are closed than in any other county. So I hope that these policies can be revisited, and instead of trying to implement a culture of, I mean, essentially banning and lying, we can switch to a culture of prevention planning and education. So in this case, prevention planning is just tell people to go down from the bottom, and education is don't lie to people, right? People are smart. Treat them with respect, and give them the tools that they need to make the right decisions. Creation of this content is sponsored by viewers like you. So if you want to see more like it, please consider joining me on YouTube. Join for a small monthly fee or Patreon. Thank you very much. You all have a fantastic day.